Say somebody asked me and say, Excuse me, Pastor. God, the Bible never said anywhere that you shouldn't smoke. I said the one that the Bible said you have not obeyed, the one that the Bible has not spoken about, you are asking question about. Obey the one that the Bible said that you should not lie. You see, when you see people that are asking, the Bible said, Don't get involved in foolish questions like that. Are you following what I'm saying? How much light do you have? There are churches today that don't believe in any other thing apart from salvation. And those people are saved. Do you understand what I'm saying? They are so born again hmm, <laughs> that even they are trying to preach salvation to some angels. Now that's as much as they know. If they live in the light of the word of God, they know. And the rapture comes, they will go. Are you following what I'm saying? More knowledge brings more responsibility. God is not holding every Christian responsible for everything. Are you following what I'm saying? Amen? I tell people, if you come to life for us, it's obviously the demand that is going to be placed on you is going to be different from any other church. Are you following what I'm saying? Because God called this church to be a local, assi a local assembly with a global assignment. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, it, it, we are local, but we are global in outreach. Are you following? So, it is going to be difficult for you to say, well, but one of my friends goes to a particular church. They don't, they don't ask them to do the kind of things that you're doing. Amen? Praise God. Now, I get a lot of invitations to preach for people that I don't even go. There are enough pastors and ministers in the ministry that can handle that. Are you following what I'm saying? Praise God. And go to preach and be a blessing to people. So it's important that you understand that. So the kind of demand that God will ask from this church is going to be different from the demand that is going to ask from another church. You see, sometimes people get themselves in problem by comparing themselves with each other. I hope you follow what I'm saying. Years ago, I asked a young man, and do you know what? One day I saw him, I saw him preaching on television as uh, interpreting for a man of God. And I said, oh, praise God, he found his place at last. Because years ago, himself and a classmate of his, they were, with, they were under the ministry. His classmate, colleague, they were best of friends. They were in the same class. They, were almost, they, they did almost everything together. But this other one, the calling on his life is to found a ministry. This other one, the calling on his life is to be an associate pastor. But he assumed that because his friend is called to start a ministry, he also is going to start. And when that other one told me, I said, God is telling him to go to Kano. I said, you've been trained. You'll make it. And he went to Kano. When there's crisis in Kano, he doesn't leave. He stays there with his flock and doing the work that God has sent him to. And he came and said to me, I said, God is sending him to Zaria. I said, no. He said, what do you mean? I said, God, you are, God is not sending you. You are copying your friend. He didn't like it, so he got angry and all that. And then he went to a friend of mine years ago, and he went and stayed with him. And then one day, my friend called me and said, look at the young man that he sent to me. I left him in the office and traveled for meetings, and he came back. He had packed his load and all. I said, I'm sorry. Okay, and then he went to start a church. After some time, he came to me and said, you see, at the church is not going. I said, look, is the God called you to do that? And all that. Eventually, he folded up and then found his place. Now, it is not on. Sometimes, all the places he had gone to, people think that he was not sent by God. God didn't call him. God called him, but didn't know the level of his calling. Because his friend was called to be a founder of a ministry does not mean that he's called to be a founder of a ministry. Not everybody that has a call to be apostle, prophet, evangelist, teacher, or pastor will be called to be a founder. There is a battle that goes with the founder's ministry that if you are not called to it, you may not even survive it. And one of the things when people come to me and say, God has called me, I say, are you sure God has called you to be a headship minister, 
to start a ministry, say yes. I say sure, you are sure, be very sure. Because the ministry is more brutal than hell. Are you following what I'm saying? That if God didn't call you, the devil is going to throw everything he's got at you. So check it and be honest with yourself. If people are deceiving you, it's okay. But when you start deceiving yourself, you're in trouble. Can you get what I'm saying? So it's important that we understand that. Do you get what I'm saying? Amen? Okay? So that different people must understand that God will not hold you responsible beyond what he gave you. Are you following what I'm saying? And he's saying to us here, this church kept the word. Christians that keep the word. That's what he's looking for. You don't have to know about tabernacles. You don't have to know about the dispensations. You don't have to know everything to be a good Christian. To be a sound Christian, you don't have to. But whatever you do know, you are accountable to heaven for that knowledge. In fact, the Bible says, to whom much is given, much is expected. I can't claim not to know the things that I know. Can you get what I'm saying? There are some things that people have offered me that God say you know better than that. Other people may do it, but I can't deny what I know under God. Can you get what I'm saying? Praise God. And it's so vital that Christians, we recognize this key. And this is going to free you from condemnation today. Are you following what I'm saying? Amen. You know, there are some things that some people don't know is a sin. And that's what this place is saying. Now look at 1 John 1. Get this point into your spirit today. And start living up to the level of truth that you have. Can you understand me? Huh? Some years ago, one of my sisters has this habit to criticize a, a, a particular man of God whenever he, he comes on the air. Oh, she said, this is my truth. This. I said, sister, let me tell you something. You are not there when God called him. I said, just leave that man alone. If you don't want to hear him, switch off your TV. You don't want to, you don't want to, nobody forced, he has not forced you to come to his church. Just keep your mouth. You see, what do you mean? I say, it's a brotherly counsel. Just keep your mouth shut. Do you know there are Christians that don't know that speaking against the anointed is sin? And that's what John, 1 John 1 says. Because if God judges us on the basis of everything that is written in the Bible, all of us have missed it. How many of you agree with that? If God should take the laws of the Bible and apply it to every one of us, nobody is going to make it. So he says in 1 John 1, look at verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Do you get that? What sin does the blood of Jesus cleanse us from? Now, put your finger in that place and look at another scripture in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. Are you there? Why do we come to church? Look at verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. What day? The day of the coming of Jesus. He says that two things will happen as you see the day of the coming of Jesus. You will see some people that have formed the habit of missing church. It's a sign that Jesus is coming back. And those are the people that some Christians are going to copy. God said they are not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. As you see the day approaching, the devil will be trying to get as many Christians to miss the rapture. And the first thing he's going to do is to cool down their love for church. You see them begin to complain. No, I don't feel like going to church today. Um, this, this, I, 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 don't, I don't think I'll, I'll, go, I'll go next week. And things like that. I say, when you, you that you are prepared, because you see, it, most people have been deceived and think that God is looking for everybody. He wants everybody, but he say, qualify yourself. Do you get what I'm saying? When we come to church, one of the things that coming to church enables us to do is to get knowledge, our, no, our, our, our knowledge renewed and refreshed so that we don't go into willful sin. What is willful sin? Willful sin is sin that you commit on an issue that you know better. That's willful sin. If a mother has a 16-year-old girl and a 6-year-old girl at home, and the 16-year-old girl has been told, don't do this in the kitchen, and the 6-year-old girl 
whether she hears it or not, she doesn't even understand it. And she goes to do what the 16 year old has been warned not to do. The mother isn't going to apply the same punishment to the six year old as she will do to the 16 year old. Am I correct? Now, the Bible says, don't not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. You see people that will stop going to church as the, as the coming of Jesus is coming. Some of them will say, oh, they are full of hypocrites. Church is full of hypocrites. All of them are hypocrites. What are you? A saint? Perfect church. The day you joined, it became an imperfect church. There's no perfect service. The Bible says perfecting the saints. There is a perfecting service, not a perfect service. Our meetings are not perfect meetings. They are perfecting meetings. Are you following what I'm saying? Praise God. Yeah. We are gathered together to be perfected. And understand that. Can you get what I'm saying? Some of us have relatives and people that, that, that are cutting down their commitments to God. It's a sign of the last days. The devil knows he can't get you when you are hot. And you can't get you to do some things until your conscience is deadened. So look at what it says here. Now, we read the other one that he said, if we, if we walk in the light, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Which sin is he cleansing us from? After all, when we got born again, the blood of Jesus cleansed us from sin. Am I correct? When we got born again, the sin that the blood of Jesus cleansed us from is the sin that made everybody a sinner. That is the sin of Adam. Do you understand what I'm saying? So now, but there are other sins, things that are sinful in the sight of God, things that are wrong that you don't even know. Nobody goes to hell because he smokes cigarettes. Everybody goes to hell because the original sin of Adam is in their life. And they rejected the solution to the sin of Adam, which is Jesus. That's why they go to hell. Are you following what I'm saying? But now it says, look at what he's saying in this Hebrews chapter 10. I mean, verse, we are, verse 26. It says, as you see the day approaching, let us exhort one another. That is, encourage one another. Just say, bro, let's go to fellowship. Bro, let's go. Don't miss fellowship. So it, it tells me that circumstances and conditions may begin to come up on the earth that will be making it more difficult. Can you get what I'm saying? In the lives of some people, that's the devil. Now look at what it says in verse 27. Verse 26, for if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fairy indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. Do you see that? What is he saying here? What is different between this sin that there's no redemption for and the one that the blood of Jesus is cleansing us from? What he's saying is this. Are you listening to what I'm saying? What he's saying is this. The person that has a little knowledge and is walking in the light of that knowledge, there are things he doesn't know. For example, I know that speaking against the anointed is wrong. I remember years ago, you understand what I'm saying, in the early days of the Pentecostal move, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, T.L. Osborne came to Nigeria to hold some crusades and great miracles happened. One of the men of God that was there was telling us what people began to say. And say, you know, people, some people began to say that, oh, you know why, why that man, why that man, great miracles happened? It was because of his mustache. It was because of his mustache and the ring that was in his hand. Now, they were saying that out of jealousy, they, as men of God, they knew that that man of God was standing in the anointing and it was the power of Jesus that was healing and doing the deliverance. Are you following what I'm saying? But they didn't have that much power in their life. They knew better. When we went to Oyo in 1989 for your special healing service, after the meeting, we left the town and then we came back, you know, and oh, we saw things happen in that church in the service by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Later, one sister from Malaysia, a nurse, went to Oyo to work. She met a sister that was there and said, which church are you coming from? And he said, well, life was, he said, Pastor Reverend, ah, that, man, that sister was in the meeting. He said, that man is using talisman, don't you know? He said, what? He said, don't you see his mustache? So during the meeting, that sister was looking at my mustache. And beloved, if it is mustache, Muslims will be getting more miracles done. How many of you know what I'm talking about? If it is mustache, you know people that deliberately by religion, they will have more miracles in India. Some of them have beard that is crawling on the floor. If it is that, it takes more than that. Now that sister could be excused. She doesn't have that much knowledge. But it's a different thing for a pastor that was in that meeting. You understand what I'm saying? Because when we came into the meeting like that, you understand? 
I wasn't this big, so you can imagine how small I was. And I went with a friend of mine. He was a six-footer. And, you know, we, we, we just we walked in. And one woman screamed and said, my God, he's a small boy. I said, I think the Holy Spirit didn't like that statement. The first night. So when they called me to pick, to, to preach, and as I took the microphone and said, let's praise God, the Holy Ghost just jumped in the crowd. And people began to fall under the anointing. And things were happening. You understand what I'm saying? Demons were screaming out. Before I could preach, it was more than 30 minutes. Just the Holy Ghost, just moving and bringing people forward, rebuking demons and things like that. God wanted to tell that woman, he may be a small boy, but there's a big God inside him. But that sister saw the mustache. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, that's if the pastor was there, who knew that this is the anointing and said the same thing, they would not receive the same dealing. That sister was speaking from the level of knowledge she had. It didn't affect me. Can you get what I'm saying? Amen. A woman had brought a prophecy to me years ago and said, Don't say, Lord, my son, I'm a God of cleanliness. I want to remove your mustache. I said, I won't do it. He said, You won't obey God. I said, That's not God speaking to you. You are overstepping your boundary. You are not my wife. And if you don't like my mustache, when you get to heaven, write the petition. Don't come because it's going to be there. I'm going to praise God with it. Praise God. You know, some people are always trying to, to, to propound their opinion through prophecy. That's why some people, God can't trust them with gifts of the Spirit. If God should give her prophecy, now she will control her husband. She's been trying to control him before. Now, if you get gifts of the Spirit, zo, 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 bra, bra, mama, don't say the Lord. Hmm. So God said, no, I can't trust you yet. You've got to break that attitude. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. How much sorrow punishment suppose it that if be thought worthy who are trodden under foot the Son of God and accounted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified. This is somebody that is saved, an unholy thing, and has done despise to the Spirit of grace. In Hebrews chapter 6, he told us of the things that can lead a person to commit the sin against the Holy Ghost. You know, there are people in the psychiatric world today that are mad, completely mad, who believe they are committed the sin against the Holy Ghost. And I believe that this is one of the great dangers of not presenting balanced truth to Christians. And part of the thing is that, for example, I tell people, if you come to church and you are determining whether this church is to be my church and things like that, you can't form a conclusion whether that church is your church on one-time visit. Before you can make a, 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 a sound decision, whether this church has something for you, you have to at least attend five different sessions. You can come on a Sunday that the pastor is dealing with something funny. You may come on a Sunday that they are doing the bad day of the pastor. And you now say, oh, this church, I laugh anyone. Whereas that may not be what that church does. Can you get what I'm saying? You have to hear at least enough to know, okay, this is the doctrinal base. This is this, this is that. You understand what I'm saying? And in Hebrews chapter 6, you find if people don't have this balanced doctrine, either they come under condemnation after they have been born again, there's a difference between conviction and condemnation. Holy Ghost convicts you. Men condemn you. Holy Ghost conviction is to tell you what you did wrong and the way out. If you ever get a prophecy that told you and say, ah, you are done for. Don't say the Lord, it is finished. That's the devil. Did you hear what I said? The Holy Ghost never, the Holy Ghost will tell you, yes, son, you did wrong. This is the way out. God is always redemptive in his actions. Even hell is a product of mercy. If God you allow sinners in heaven, they will suffer more from the holiness of heaven than the fires of hell. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The holiness of God against a spirit that is not saved will destroy it faster than the fire of hell will punish him. So in mercy, he made hell. Can you get what I'm saying? So don't ever forget that as far as God is concerned. So look at what the Bible is saying here. That I don't believe that most, many people, some people are in psychiatric world, I thought they have committed a sin against the Holy Ghost. Most of the time, they need deliverance from a deceiving spirit. I've had to cast that, that spirit from many people. They say, I thought I committed a sin against the Holy Ghost. I say, you can't commit it. Look at what the Bible says in Bible 6. Just go there before we go back to Revelation 3. It says in verse um, 1, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, and of faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptism, and of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. Amen? And this we will do if God permit. That means there are some people that God does not permit them to move on. Why? They have not left, they have not, they have not, they have not gone through the first things that he talked about there. Can you get us? But if God 
If you do well with those foundational matters, you say, okay, now you can move on. How do you know that God has permitted you to move on? That new truths, you find wisdom to apply it in your life. You understand what I'm saying? Now, verse 4, for it is impossible for those who are once enlightened, that's born again, and have tasted of the heavenly gift, that's baptism in the Holy Ghost, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, they share in the operations of the Holy Ghost. Verse 5, they have tasted the good word of God. They have gone beyond the milk of the word of God. They've gone into the deeper truths of Christianity and the powers of the world to come. 75% of the present day Christians can commit this. When you talk of somebody that's tasted of the powers of the world to come, you're talking of people, somebody that has raised the dead. Some people that have been transported to heaven. Are you following? There are men that have worked well, worked with God that, oh, they've had things, had very terrible things. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, the Bible says, if a person has gotten to that kind of a level, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, it is impossible. Can you imagine somebody that has used the name of Jesus to raise the dead? Command you to rise in Jesus' name and rose, rose from the dead. Has seen Jesus face to face. You understand what I'm saying? Has been taken to heaven and now come to a place and say, Jesus is not the way again. Kill over Can't pray to him again. He's not, he's not sinning because he's persecuted. There are some Christians that come from very terrible background, Muslims or whatever, and they got born again. The father tie her on, onto a rope in the roof and light fire and say, renounce Jesus. On that pain, she said, I renounce Jesus. Jesus is not the Lord. I will come back. That is not a backslider. And the devil now tells her and say, you have sinned the sin against the Holy Ghost. No, 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 no. The fact that your heart is still longing after Jesus is a proof that you have not sinned it. A man that has committed the sin against the Holy Ghost, his heart is chained to that of the devil. He doesn't have any feeling of affinity for God again. No matter how bad you have sinned, run back to your father. The first reward is open door. Divine opportunities come the way of the faithful as a reward for their faithfulness. Write it down. Divine opportunities. God, open doors for you here. Open this, whether in your business, whether in your family, in different places. The open door blessing actually is for the faithful Christians that keep the word of God. Hello everyone, are you looking for a place to fellowship online this season? Are you searching for an avenue to feed your faith consistently on a daily basis? Are you looking for answers? Then we've got you covered. God has directed his servant, Reverend Olushala Ayodele Areogun, to minister the word of life to every believer. Join in using the following links, www.lifevoicesinternationalchurch.org slash streaming or www.dciradio.org. You can also connect with us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Vimeo with the handle at Reverend Areogo. Fellowship online with us every Wednesday for our midweek service from 5 o'clock in the evening and on Sundays for our super celebration service from 8 o'clock in the morning on the same platform. For inquiries, you can contact us via these telephone numbers plus 234-806-091-9696 plus 234-810-5864. 4579 and plus 234 803 725 SMS only. You can also send an email to lifevoices at atmail.com. Remember, this is not the season to fear, but a time to feed on the undiluted word of truth and return back to the place of personal intimacy with God. The Lord has said you are ease, you are hidden, impregnable, and strengthened. Jesus is Lord. Got an answer, 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 answer from heaven. My answer, my answer from heaven. I've got an answer, 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 answer from heaven. My answer, my answer from heaven. No more toil, no more toil, no more struggle. 
got a knife. 